Greetings friends! Most of us who are 30 years old and older growing up never heard of the intolerances and allergies that are common today. Many of these terms have become recognized and more well known by most households in the past 10 to 20 years. However, that used to not be the case. One of those intolerances that we're going to talk about today is gluten. And not too long ago, I did an interview with Dr. Jerry Ferris, an integrative medicine doctor, who talks about gluten. Here's Dr. Ferris on the problem with gluten. Thanks, Mike. Um, well, gluten is out there. I mean, you know, we hear a lot about it. We don't really know what to think about it. And we're bombarded with gluten. So let's kind of look at it from a basic standpoint first. We must understand that the original wheat that our forefathers ate had approximately 11 or 12 chromosomes in, in the wheat stalk. And we could digest wheat. So in the concept that we're, we can't take in wheat and digest it is really a fallacy. What happened is we started genetically modifying wheat. Why? Grows faster, grows taller, makes the bread whiter, makes the texture better. So now that original 11 or 12 chromosome plant is 43, 44 chromosomes. The difficulty is now the body recognizes it as something foreign. So that when you go get that loaf of white bread that tastes so good and looks so good, you're starting to put foreign substances in your body. What does the body do? When the body sees foreign substances, it looks at it the same way it looks at a virus or a bacteria, it attacks it. Because it says, this is not good for me, I must do something to react against it. So that's the first thing we start to find problems with gluten. The other thing that is the real issue with gluten is gluten creates permeability or holes in your digestive system. Now what's the importance of that? Okay? You want nutrients to get through, but you don't want everything to get through. Gluten starts inflaming your digestive system, and by inflaming it, it makes it what we call leaky. So the things that shouldn't get through are getting through. Okay? What does that mean? Now, I've got potentially bad things getting into my system, circulatory, and are getting to other parts of my body. So we see a lot of people now that have diseases of what we call autoimmunity. Autoimmune diseases have ramped up dramatically in the last 20 to 30 years. And a lot of it can be traced to this gluten intolerance. Understand that not everybody has celiac disease and not everybody has gluten intolerance, very common terms. But approximately 70 plus percent of the United States population has sensitivity to gluten. Okay, let's take that, what that means. You continue to eat gluten because it tastes good. I mean, go to a restaurant, what's the first thing they give you? Bread, right? So they give you bread. So now you start creating this inflammatory reaction in your body and your body can't deal with it on a local level and it starts getting into the whole system. I start having joint pain. I get irritable bowel. I start putting on weight. I start getting brain fog. I get autoimmune disease. It, it doesn't have to happen, but it does happen. And why it happens to some versus others, we still don't know. So what I tell people, and I, had, I learned this, is you have to eliminate gluten. And gluten shows up in everything. It's interesting because I do food allergen testings. If you look at the number one allergen out there, it's gluten. I mean, there are other allergens, but the one that really crops up over and over again on a food allergy panel is gluten. Once we take it away, symptoms get better. Gluten is right now one of the biggest problems we run into in, in the world of functional medicine and it's trying to get this message across. I personally don't suffer from any of the symptoms associated with being gluten intolerant. However, 
everyone else in my family does. For example, our kids, after they eat gluten, they begin to have dark circles under their eyes. They also begin to get tired and sluggish. And I still remember when Lacey discovered that she is gluten intolerant. For a long time, she had been suffering with digestion, digestive issues and just overall aches and pains in her body and her hips and her back. So she decided to go on the Jumpstart program that I created. And this program that basically helps your body to restart and, and jumpstart itself back to health. And a part of that program, it also helps you to identify allergies and intolerances that your body may be suffering from. So as she was going through that program, so a few days into it, she had a, a dinner that she made that was just vegetables and she put some soy sauce on those vegetables. But guess what? She began to have intense stomach pain right away. So she looked at the ingredients on that soy sauce and get, guess what one of the ingredients was? Yes, wheat. Wheat was like the number one or number two ingredient on that soy sauce. And for five days straight after she had that, she, she was just suffering from stomach pain. So that was her aha moment that gluten should be out of her diet going forward. Do you think the problem with gluten is something that is new or has it been around even before? You talked about some of the how gluten was uh, traditionally or historically that it's been modified. Do you feel like the gluten intolerance is something new or has it been around? It's probably all, always been around, but as they continue to modify the wheat products and the other grain products more and more, it, it ramped up fairly precipitously. So that we see many, many more of these allergies and these intolerances in this back to, well, you know, I've got irritable bowel syndrome or I have this gut issue or I have chronic diarrhea or I, have, I can't seem to lose weight or I feel bloated all the time. And all this is, is your gut's inflamed. And we have to heal your gut now. In addition to our wheat being genetically modified over the years, there are some other reasons why our bodies are not digesting gluten the way it used to. Another reason is milk. Our milk has been homogenized and pasteurized to death so to the point where it does not have the bacteria that is present in raw milk. Wheat and raw milk go hand in hand. There's a bacteria in raw milk that helps our bodies to digest and process wheat. And for most people, raw milk is not a part of their diet anymore like it used to. Also, our wheat has been sprayed with all kinds of pesticides and glyphosate to the point where we have these chemicals in our bodies and then we're ingesting them through wheat that just aren't good for our digestive system and our bodies altogether. In addition to taking gluten out of their diet, because uh, there's a lot of damage that has been done to the digestive system over that time of eating all of those, the gluten and, and foods that just inflame the digestive system. How would, you, how would you describe or how would you tell someone to improve their gut health after they, they've coming off of eating gluten and they want to improve in that area? Well, we tend to go on this idea of, of what is called the four or five R's of GI health. And the first thing we have to do is remove. I mean, you, you, have to, you have to take away the offending agent just to see if there's a change because, you know, if you continue to put your finger in the fire, you're going to get burned. Now, once we remove, we now have to get into this idea of we have to heal, re-inoculate, replace, and so this is sort of, a, you know, where your prebiotics, your probiotics come in. And then there's also some supplements that are very, very good at, for healing the gut. And we have to do this in a stepwise process because this damage has been ongoing for time and it's going to take time to do that. But again, the first big thing is we have to remove it for at least four weeks and just see if that alone makes a difference. So where are you with gluten in your diet? If you're gluten-free, please let us know in the comments below. But whether you have decided to be gluten-free or not, you should at least be able to identify and know whether you are suffering from the symptoms of being gluten intolerant. Some of the things that I do want to caution you on 
is just because a product says gluten free on it does not mean that it's healthy for you. Yes, there's a lot of gluten free products that are unhealthy. Yes, going gluten free can be healthier for you, especially if you're suffering from being gluten intolerant or have an allergy towards gluten. However, there's a lot of ingredients in some of these gluten free products that are just junk and they're not good for you. When you're going to the grocery store, shop around the perimeter. You're pretty much safe there. And if you do want to buy grains, there's some grains that are, are non-gluten grains that you can have, such as quinoa, millet, oats, oat bran. And we'll provide a more exhaustive list of these foods in our email. So make sure that you subscribe to our email list if you haven't already. Also, if you still want to consume wheat, like I do, but you want to consume the best, Try to go with heirloom varieties such as Kmoot. A number of companies offer this wheat which is not genetically modified and it is much better for you. And a lot of people who are able to eat wheat can have Kmoot. Well, that is it for this vlog. I hope you found this information to be helpful and informative. And if you're interested in signing up for our email list, once again, it's in the show notes below. Also, the Jumpstart, if you're interested in purchasing that, it will also be in the show notes below. Hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Also, if there's any other topics that you would like for us to cover, please let us know. See you next time.